Dude, 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 dude. 30-incher. Producer, dude, I promised you a shorter day today. Thank God. But I didn't, I didn't make sure that you were gonna have a shorter boat ride. We have a very long boat ride. It's the middle of summer, fish are out deep, and things have kind of picked up in between all this wacky weather. When we've had stable weather, the bite's been really, really good. Fish are really deep, and that means going out quite a bit farther. So we're gonna um, pony up and burn some gas. That's what we're doing. got a little do. problem too with the steamy lens. It is humid out today. Are you sure it's just not because you're so hot for me? <laughs> far halfway to Cleveland literally it actually is I know yeah it actually is yeah I know my gas budget got broke about an hour ago but um, you know we're gonna we're gonna try to do something a little different you see on the screen here here's a great example those little pellets right there that's when we we're still going you can see the disturbance so that's when we we're going 30 miles an hour and then right in here those are those fish and they're on a, basically a temperature break and so they're super super deep so basically we are in the middle of nowhere you know these open water kind of fish in the summertime are circling around they're looking for that cooler water where there's a little temperature break because that's where the smaller bait fish are at that they're kind of chewing on but some of the small walleyes perch stuff like that a lot of the lake is basically dead because of the oxygen content so most of the fish are going to be pretty deep so since we can only run a handful of lines here we're going to just see keep everything pretty deep on the dipsy divers because it's so much easier to check those lines when you get junk fish on or small fish or just non-target stuff so with that we want to cover as much water and also help keep some of that junk off and generally you can do that by going faster and that's why the dipsies are so good oh here we go here we go okay there we go. Oh, and I grabbed my other one too. Oh boy. We're, yeah, we. Yeah, he cruised right in on me there. Great. But. Yeah. So what we started talking about, and I don't have it figured out, is you know the angle of the dangle here because of the current. And I'm not, I'm not going the right way. And I'm gonna have to change it up here. All right. So that's kind of what we were talking about. Not what we're after to start here, but this is the reason we're using, you know, some bigger baits where traditionally, you know, you've seen us pull some of the Silver Streak spoons and such. Not illegal fish, not what we're after, but, um, Basically, by going faster and using some of these bigger baits, we can still keep the stuff down there and also know right out of the bat that that fish is on. You know, if we had a planer board or something on, you could tow that damn thing all day. So what we got going on here is I've got a one and a half and a three setting. So it came pretty clear. You know, you like to fish with the current and we're kind of like, I don't know, we're, we're going across a little bit of structure here, which is changing things too. But long story short, how I set up there from what it looked like previously is no good today. And basically saw that with the way that the line anglers are going, looking at the fish hawk. So I'm gonna tr try to change my angle here. And if not, I may just have to pick up and kind of come down a different angle. I mean, the way that you go, whether it's east to west or north to south or whatever that may be for that day is super, super important when you're fishing deep like this or with dipsy divers. The angle of the dangle is one of the biggest parts. All right, there we go. Outside, 
So I had to pop that one. A little bit of direction change made a difference here. So one thing I like to do is I keep my releases a little tighter and you know I can make make things difficult because you know it's harder to see bites or get them in but the advantage is if you get into a bunch of fish or something happens you're not going to be prematurely releasing yes I said it guys you know you don't want all going at once or if you get a bunch of little junk fish or something they can really screw you up uh, you know you can get a lot of tangles and stuff like that so premature releasing is not good when fishing you know this is a family show I mean it's really not it's really not if, it's, uh, you say that all the time but it's it makes me feel better you know if my mom's watching that went out the window a long time ago yeah I think it did too but you know really nice size fish here luckiest walleye in Lake Erie as I like to say but again you know paying attention to the line angle we got that one we we're just talking about how um, I didn't I wasn't the current and the way that we were going there it wasn't right it changed and I could just see that and feel it you know the easiest way is to look at your fish hawk and it'll just tell you it's like reading your watch trying to tell what time it is unless you want to use a sundial Do you guys want to use a sundial just use a fish hawk it's way easier you look at it and it goes up oh, too fast too slow but honestly the line angle deal is huge I mean I probably would advise most guys to use a high-vis line because like on this one it didn't trip out which is kind of expected because I, I have my stuff really tight but you see that line angle come up instead of diving down like this that line angle just comes up a little bit like this and if you think about it it's because you're towing three pounds more weight behind there but it wasn't enough to trip it out of that mechanism so that's how how, you, how do you adjust for that line angle? how do you adjust for the line angle yeah. You don't adjust for it, you just watch it. You gotta know what's happening. You don't adjust, you just, you see that. Like I saw that fish that was pulling that back and up because it just, like if I jumped down there and I was towing behind, it's gonna cause that line to come up. But that release keeps that down. So, it's just gonna change. If you see, I, I doubt we can get the camera on this and see exact, but if you look really close from the rod tip to the water, you see how that's down on about a 45 degree angle. If that starts riding up at maybe like a 60, you've probably got your toe in a little fish, but that trip is staying in because my, my releases are a little tight. And so you're not gonna have that. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That might be a steelhead, boys. <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, we got a steelhead. We're about to have a shit show, folks. If this was a family show, it's going out the window. Oh, yeah. I got me a little chromer, I think. Maybe not. No, it's just a sheeper. Jeepers, sheepers. But he is thugging tough. So, but again, you know, a, a quick little learning deal. I mean, it ain't the right flavor. God, he was thumping, man. About ripped his head off. Ouch. Guy got a nose piercing. Must be a millennial sheephead. Got that nice little nose piercer out right there. Look at that. A little extra flesh. A little, yeah. But we're catching. You know, we're pretty much bouncing them here pretty good making that change so we're actually going into the wind which I want to get up here a little bit and then turn around and come back through it but so far the angle of the dangle change is the deal producer if you want to get a shot of the uh, sonar screen you're probably gonna see a bunch of fish right down on the bottom there oh, 7-0 oh, free show now, it's important. See, I popped that release out of that thing. This one might be another cheaper, but I popped that release out. You got to make sure you're not trying to reel when that tension is still on there from the release, like if it doesn't trip. You know, when you're starting off, you're going to have to mess a lot with that tension. There's a little screw in there, you know, a little righty-tighty-lefty-loosey. 
because the problem is is you don't want them to, you know too loose is you speed up a little bit to get around some knucklehead out here or you go into the wind and then all of a sudden guess what they're popping out and then you got to reset everything so too tight and then you drag fish around which I'd rather have them a little too tight than a little too loose yeah sheep that again Ooh. You know, you can always tell the sheepers, they just bang different. So, you know, one thing we got going on, run lithium batteries now, so it's really nice because I can kind of overuse my bow mount motor, where normally you just couldn't run it that hard because you wouldn't get through a day. That's not an issue anymore. So I'm running this pretty heavy, but then I'm using my kicker. If there's one thing you're doing wrong when you're fishing dipsy divers, besides probably not paying attention to that line angle, uh, to know if there's a fish on or it's tripped or Daniel hangled up or whatever the deal is, is not going fast enough. Generally speaking, you know, dipsies are not a slow presentation. You know, two probably, I won't say the minimum, but that's one of the, the slower speeds I'll use them. You know, two, two, five in that range. I mean, it's a, it's a quick deal. You're covering water, you're fishing deep, that's what you want to do. Not that you can't fish them slower, but it's much more difficult and depth control is really difficult. I'm going to pick up and we're going to run, we're going to go down with the, with the current, we're, I'm fighting it too hard. Alright, here we go. We're gonna make a little with the with the current run. Cause the fish are here, as producer dude stated. And we're catching them, but we're fighting it too hard. We want to get all the lines involved. So basically I could almost predict which side the fish were gonna get caught on based on how those lines were kind of tracking. And we're fishing half our rods and we only got four down anyhow, so we're gonna make it easier. You know, I, I think the current thing is probably the most misunderstood thing. Producer dude doesn't get it, but that's okay. Most people don't. The current, we got a natural current west to east flow here in Lake Erie. Uh oh. Hence Niagara Falls, right? Yeah, yeah, hence, yeah. And by definition, Lake Erie is actually more of a river or in, in an inland sea than it is a lake. Fun fact, you can Google check me, somebody will, but I'm right. Um, you know, you, you have to attribute for that current, you know? And then we get a lot of big storms and you get, you know, the, the islands, the Bass Islands, the, the large deep reefs or shoals. That's all gonna cause that current to change. You know, like between the Bass Islands where you guys have seen us fish a lot, you get these bottleneck areas where it's 40 feet in one spot and it's five in another. And that causes basically like a big canyon and it's that current it's racing through there just like you'd have in a reservoir. So we gotta account for it. It's gonna cause our lures to run different. It's gonna change the speed, it's gonna change the action. So a little recap, Dipsy Diver, the back, got your numbers on there. That's going to tell you if it's pointing left, right, up, down, whatever it may be. We got our tension release. Pop that in, you hear that click. I put a good snap swivel in there and a little bead to keep it from getting grinded up on my rod tip. I add a little uh, snap on the back. That's not from the factory. That way I can switch my leaders in and out. And out here when we're in that deeper, cleaner water, I use a little bit longer one. Put new ones on for producer dude. It's kind of like new underwear too. So, you know, run them leaders anywhere from 4 to 15 feet and mess with it because leader length definitely makes a difference. And then one of the big keys, we've talked about this before, but put that thing with the clicker on. If you let it out too fast, it's going to spin. You're going to get that release caught up when you go to pop it or try to reel it in. 
it's gonna be all roped, wrapped up and you're gonna cut the thing off. Last but not least, you can see I got me a little system. Black, red, white. That's gonna show me my low, my mid, and my high divers. So when these things are all laying in the boat, I can know without even looking at that diver, which one, in the rod holder it doesn't matter, which one is which. And explain the number settings. Number settings, so, because we don't have any graphics here, right? Like, you're, we're not going to do any graphics, right? We're just, I mean, you might. That's, a, that's above our budget. Okay, yeah, there's, there, there is no budget. So we're going to use the hand method. <laughs> Here's the dipsy diver. Zero's down here, that's no planing. Like a one, two, and three setting. So that basically, not only going to cover more water, but we're not going to tangle, and that's how we can run multiple divers per side. There's a three, and there's a one, two, three on each side, is that correct? Left and right, and do not confuse the left and the right, because that's like driving down the wrong side of the road. It'll be, it'll be a problem real fast, real fast. Fish. Nice one. So, you know, again, I'm talking to producer dude and I just looked over line angle. I think that's what we're gonna like put in the video somewhere. Watch your line angle. Because it's, it's, oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. It's a problem for guys when they don't, they just don't know that the fish are on. It's a nice one. <laughs> I don't have a net ready because I was so busy flapping my gums. It's gonna get interesting. Oh, really? Oh my gosh. This... Yeah, that, that's, I think that's the only one you're going to be able to get me in here. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to use it because, oh, look at you. Want... Oh, dude, you've been working out. Producer dude works out a lot, you guys. I'm just telling you right now, he's going to outrun all of us. Oh, we got, oh, we got a double. Oh, we got a double. But we got, we only got one pair of hands. To real. Oh boy. Yeah, see that low diver, you can see that rod tip knuck if you buck. Oh yeah. He's gonna be right in my <laughs> right in my line too. Uh. So when people always say, like in my book, like, why don't you just reel in some fish? Because shit hits the fan. I gotta get stuff out of the way. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. A nice oh yes! Yes! Dude! Oh boy! <laughs> oh, see the producer dude, that's almost a borderline compliment. Look at that, that's a donkey! You didn't want to say the D word, did you? No, not in August. No, but, but, but that's a donkey right there. That's a certified donkey, I don't care where you're at. That's worth a trip right there. We got a C note and gas just getting here, folks, but that's kind of worth it. But we got, oh, we got another, we got, oh, oh, oh we got two more on. Two more on, two more on. I can't even talk. So, producer dude, you know you thought, you might have thought I was a little bit full of shit. But here's the deal. We had to change our angle. You see what happened? We had a, we got three on as soon as we made a run up went with the current. So, little things like this, I mean, oh yeah, it's another nice one. A good one, man. So another thing I like to do too. Again, these are little things, and I know a lot of these guys, like guys, even fish with me in the boat a lot. They kind of look at this and they're like, yeah, 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 whatever. Honestly, these things make a big difference. Simply not putting the rod down like your bill dance, keeping that rod up, and what that does is it allows me to help keep this out of the zone because I got all these other lines working down there and the lines are going down deep. So if you can picture three-dimensionally what's happened, we, we would be tangling through or pulling our lines through those lines. This is another dunk. I'm gonna tell you straight up. 
a nice one. Oh, oh, we got one! Got one on this one! Dude. Yeah, well, but here's the difference though. Producer dude, back me here. Oh, this is another donkey, son. We got one on the low ride. We got one on the high rod. Dude, this is a giant. I need that other net. This is a giant. Oh, look at, dude. Skills, son. Just skills. Skills. Left-handed, too. Dude, son, I'm, dude, I'm almost getting impressed. I don't like giving you compliments because then shit hits the fan. Dude, 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 dude. 30 incher. Holy God. Producer, dude. <laughs> I love to talk to you, but I've got another one on. We've got all of our shit ropping, popping, stopping. I got my low diver, my high diver. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. Ugh. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna risk this one because I don't want to kill this fish. We're gonna let this one go once we make it famous. So we're just gonna take some pictures. See this one, we talked about you know tripping. We, we lost that fish there when we were reeling in the other one because I couldn't get to it. So that lure caught on my zero diver because the thing was just floating out there. And that, that's another reason I really don't like them things to trip unless they absolutely have to. Because now we got a little bit of a shit show. It really is. I mean, truthfully, this is just, you know, this is one of those deals like, you, this is a fish with a buddy deal. I feel like, I don't know, do we have any, we don't have a budget, but can we play some clown music right now? Dun, 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 dun. So, I don't know if you get a scan of this boat right now. Producer dude. I know you don't want to compliment me. No. But I'm pretty quick. You know, I'm quick at getting things untangled. You, you, you probably give me credit for that. Yeah. We, we, I can't. We got too much stuff going on. That was four bites on five rods and... That's a chaos. Yeah. Oh boy. Look at this. Just... I don't even know where to start. Such a shit show. But you know, this is another really good example. Like, I mean, this is the ultimate. You want to have four fish on at once. Hopefully you have a friend out fishing with you and so you can have them help reel. But so like right now, I have seen some chaos happen. I've almost had guide clients really screw me here in the boat because they hand me a rod because oh no it's for this side and that's when I look at my rod at the tape on my rod and I know what is what because now all of a sudden you set down the wrong the wrong setting diver the inside on the outside or a left on the right side and now you've got a half an hour cut everything up because you screwed your shit up where I'm gonna be fishing fairly quickly and when you have all this kind of chaos too, it's really good, again, little things, but you know, check and make sure that your diver um, didn't get off on the settings, you know, that you didn't have the, the things slide around on you. I had it on the, on the drive out here, you know, especially like some of these divers I'm fishing are 20 years old and they just don't tighten up like they used to. There's a story probably for that, but family show. I was talking about not being as strong, but I mean, there's producer dude making it, getting naughty, getting naughty. That was a whole lot of chaos.
You know, another little trick I do too is I'll put the beads. I use different color beads in front of my uh, snap there. Again, that bead is just to keep people from grinding my the metal and the rod tips. But also, that's another way I can look really quickly. Let's say they're in tube rod holders or something, and I'm going to know, you know, what rod that is, what setting that that is. And that may sound a little OCD, but I'm just going to tell you, it's a big, big deal when you put these things out wrong. Like, hot mess. So this pink one, that's my zero diver, which should have the white handle rod. So whatever your system is, I don't care, but make one, because if not, you're gonna make some big problems, I promise you. Yeah, that's a nice wall out here. If we had a budget and we could play like Holy Diva, you know what I mean? Like that would be the cheesiest yet coolest thing ever. Maybe that could be an Instagram story for the kids, you know? Like, dude, the fact that you know that is awesome. You are a music dude. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Oh dude, zero setting just went. Zero setting. On it, on it. Oh, donkey! Donkey! Oh, boy. Dude, just barely hooked. Oh, barely in there, but in there good. I don't care who you are, where you're at, where you're fishing. Probably about a 25 incher. Healthy, healthy fish. We're gonna let her go because we got two lines in the water and we got two fish on. Producer dude's like, I ain't into fishing, but I like this dipsy thing because we get all kinds of action going down. All starts with, I think the one thing we didn't kind of hammer home here though, is it all starts with the hummingbird. You know, you, you, gotta, you gotta be on fish. Sounds silly, but you get, oh, that one threw me right there. Good, that was actually the best thing that could have happened. That was a nice little walleye, but we don't need them. You gotta be on fish. So, you know, the ability to watch our video on marking at high speed, that is, that really, really is the deal. Because, you know, we, we went 20 plus miles. Oh yeah, oh yeah, got another one. We went 20 plus miles, and when you see that screen, it's, it started lighting up about a mile away from where we had been fishing. And you just, it's the only way you can eliminate water because we've only, I don't know, gone maybe half a mile and we've already pulled a limit of fish and then some. You know, and I know we're going to get questions. Guys watch me kind of hit the butt like that and ask me what I'm doing. I've had some private messages on that. I'm just clearing the sea fleas or sea lice or whatever you want to call it off so they don't get gummed up in the rod tip or my terminal tackle. When you do that, you'll make them jump right off. Woo! So our little bit, I mean, this is a nice fish, but our, our little bit better caliber what I'm gonna call junior donkeys and from full-size donkeys obviously we're you know that's a keeper fish but we're on our higher settings the bigger fish it seems like on the low setting there we caught some fish but they were they were definitely are some of our smaller stuff and that could be a depth thing a little bit but it probably was a angle of the dangle it seems to always work like that so producer dude I'm gonna reward you. Quick day? For not, I told you quick day, long boat drive. You did, you did. I'm gonna reward you, cause you've been a good boy. Um, but here's the deal. Make sure you watch your videos, because we're actually shooting you straight. I've seen a lot of these other guys, they say, hey, watch this video, they're not shooting you straight. We're telling you what we're doing, we're showing you what we're doing exactly. And high speed marking, like all that stuff, put all these things together, I promise you're gonna catch more fish. Producer dude, I might even get you breakfast today. That was half an hour. In and out. That was quick. Or out.
If you like the video, please subscribe. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, BigWaterFishing.com. Pretty much Big Water on all channels, right, Producer Duke? Everywhere. Everywhere. Podcasts, 